<laughs> Jamal Adams is holding out, and I'm so happy. <laughs> Welcome to Jets Talk. My name is Ryan. I'll be your pilot today. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, leave a comment down below if you want to get entered to our ticket giveaway. I got two tickets up for grabs for the Jets home opener against the New England Patriots. But let's jump on to our video of today. And it's not so much Jet-related news as much as it's me just getting a really good laugh. Jamal Adams is holding out a mandatory minicamp from the uh, or for the Seattle Seahawks, and nothing makes me happier that we have traded this malcontent off of our team with what could go down as arguably the Jets' best trade ever, trading him for two first-round picks and a third-round pick. And McDougal. <laughs> so the Jets, when everything's all said and done, right now what it looks like is the Jets gave up Jamal Adams and a third-round pick for Elijah Vera Tucker and a first-round pick. And I'll do that trade all day, every day, <laughs> because of the positions they play and the, the lengths of contract and just the value and, and everything. And this is something that I, I would have paid Jamal Adams a nice amount of money. I don't think I would give him what he wants to get. And that's, you know, he wants to break the bank. Right now, the highest-paid safety is... Who's the highest-paid safety right now? Justin... Simmons uh, of Denver getting 15.1 million a year. He signed a deal for about six, four years, 60 million or so uh, this off season. So Jamal Adams is going to want more than that amount of money. And the Seahawks, I want to say have like $8 million according to over the salary cap. And what are you going to do? <laughs> you can't sign the guy for, for that much more when you have your left tackle who's potentially going to hold out right now. He's not holding out but he's looking for more money as well. And who are you going to pay? You'd rather pay your left tackle than a blitzing safety. And look, Jamal Adams is a very exciting player. He knows how to get the fans on his side. He's, he had, what, nine and a half sacks, and he was injured most of the season, not most of the season, but some of the season last year. So more than likely, he's going to eclipse that 10-sack threshold at some point in the near future, especially with the extra game added onto the schedule. And that's not to say that that isn't valuable. Sacking the quarterback is an incredibly valuable part of this league but then he should probably be paid as a will linebacker and not as a safety. Because when you pull a safety from your secondary and you bring them into the box, you're now adding an extra player in the box and you have less players to defend the pass, which is what the Seahawks learned last year. So Seahawks fans, it's probably a little frustrating seeing him hold out, but you had to know this was coming based on what happened with the New York Jets last year. Look, if I were the Seahawks, I would let Jamal sit. Don't rework a deal. Franchise tag him next year and then let him walk after that. There's no reason to tie up that much money in a position that really does not impact the game all that much. In the, what, three years that the Jets had Jamal Adams, there's maybe two games that I'd consider uh, were won because of the way Jamal played. One was when he stole Daniel Jones's lunch money and ran the opposite way <laughs> with a fumble uh, for a touchdown. That was, you know, huge, huge, huge. Uh, and the other one was when was was the Dallas game last year, two years ago, uh, where we had that goal line stand and Jamal Adams had the it was a pass breakup or a sack of Prescott. I, I don't remember exactly, but either way, the whole reason the Cowboys were in the red zone to begin with was because Jamal Adams had a pass interference call that put them all the way down there anyway. So, in short, Jamal Adams, while he's very exciting to watch and to have on your team and for your fan base, and he really is a pretty good guy. Like he stayed stupid late at some of the Jets' early preseason games and green and white scrimmages and signed a ton of autographs. So the guy's not a bad dude. He's just not really worth the money. And I think you guys gave up a ton of money for a guy that isn't going to translate to wins on the field. So guys, let me know where your thoughts are. Seahawk fans, let me know what you think as well because I'm curious on this subject. Do you guys want to sign him long-term? Do you think he's worth the potential $20 million that he's going to be asking for in this contract? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, go Jets.